Welcome back. So over the weekend, we did the NFC record predictions and NFC playoff picture predictions. Today, of course, is the AFC record predictions and the playoffs as well. So I'll do the full NFL. Get it done before the year starts on Thursday officially. Leave in the comments your AFC record predictions. Who do you think makes it out this conference this year? A lot of good teams in here, of course, but I hope you guys enjoy the video. Leave a like, subscribe, and let's get into it. So just like last time, we'll go east to west. We'll start with the AFC East. I'm gonna have the Jets in first place at 10 and 7. Their over under is nine and a half wins. Second place, I'll have the Dolphins at nine and eight. They're at nine and a half. Third place, the Buffalo Bills at eight and nine. Their over under is ten and a half. Wow. And last place, I have the New England Patriots at 2-15. Their over-under is 4.5. Starting with the Jets, of course, last year went about as badly as it could have. It was over after four plays. It's a massive year for the front office, of course, Joe Douglas, the head coach, Robert Sala, and even Aaron Rodgers to a degree. I mean, he's already going to be a Hall of Famer, but this is like maybe his last chance to get a ring or just get back to the Super Bowl in general. The offensive line definitely had some improvements. Tyrone Smith was added. Morgan Moses is back. They even have their first round pick, Olu Fashanu, on the bench as like a swing tackle. So that's great to have. The main question is, is Aaron Rodgers washed or can he even stay healthy? I don't think he's the same guy from 2020 and 21 when he won the MVPs. We saw him play in 22. It wasn't that great. But even 75, 80% of old Aaron Rodgers is much better than what they've had the past few years at quarterback. So if he can come in here and just be like a stable veteran presence that can stay healthy, not that he's going to compete for the MVP, of course, but just be a top 15-ish quarterback this year, that should be enough. Their defense is very legit. They get Chuck Clark back from the ACL injury last year. They brought over Javon Kinlaw from the 49ers. Of course, he once played for Robert Sala. And at backup quarterback, they brought in Tyrod Taylor. Last year, it was Zach Wilson, of course, and some other guys. The backup quarterback position for a team like this is pretty important. So Tyrod, of course, was a giant the last couple years, played well for the Giants last year. So that's a pretty good acquisition for them. And this this is a very low floor, high ceiling type of team. You can see a scenario where the Jets go 6-11. and 11. You can also see a scenario where they go 12-5. and 5. Like there's a wide range of outcomes for this Jets team, but it all starts with number eight, almost at 12, number eight, staying healthy. Next is the Dolphins at nine and eight. And they lost some guys in the offseason, Christian Wilkins, Robert Hunt. Those are pretty big losses, but they made so much money that they really couldn't afford to keep them, so I get it. They need to make a real push this year. It's year three of Mike McDaniel, year three of... Tyreek Hill. This team last year pretty much would beat up on the bad teams, but not do well against the good teams. So it looked great at times. They they had their games where they would score 40 plus points or 70 in that one game in week three versus Denver. But for the most part, this Dolphins team seems to crumble when they play in some bad weather games or play very good teams. And you just cannot have that anymore. Like they have a good enough roster, you would think to compete. They signed Tua to the extension, which I wasn't a big fan of, but then again, like what else can they really do? So I, I do get where they're coming from with that. They have guys coming back from injury. Jalen Phillips, Bradley Chubb coming off an Achilles and an ACL injury. So we'll see when they're back and if they're the same player when they get back. Can they get a healthy season out of Devon Achan? That's a big thing as well. You have OBJ already injured. Not that he was really relied on to be great this year, but still. Tyreek and Waddle, of course, are still there. And you have Malik Washington, an interesting slot receiver for them out of uh, Virginia. I was a fan of him in the draft, so we'll see if he makes an impact this year. The secondary looks great. You have Kendall Fuller, who they signed. Jalen Ramsey, Jordan Poyer, and Javon Holland. So they have a very good secondary as long as those guys, of course, do not fall off. Some of these guys are getting a bit up there in age and a little past their prime, but I think for the most part, they'll be fine. And another small concern with the Dolphins is their offensive line. It's really not that great. I think what makes it work is the offensive scheme, which of course, Mike McDaniel's great, but then you also have Tua who gets the ball out quicker than anybody. So that also helps. So it's not like the offensive line is the biggest deal for this team, but I just wish it looked better on paper. So we'll see if that impacts the season. But overall, they should be a good enough team, I think, to make the playoffs. Maybe we'll get to that at the end, but I have them at nine and eight. Next, the Buffalo Bills, I have at eight and nine. It's a tough one. I really want to have them with more wins, but at the same time, I can't have every team in this division, uh, aside from the Patriots, but I can't have every team in this division being 
a playoff team. I just don't think that's going to happen in real life. They did lose Gabe Davis, Mitch Morse, and Jordan Poyer, who I just mentioned, in free agency. They did bring in Curtis Samuel, Mike Edwards at safety. I would say they lost more than they gained. Of course, they lost Stefan Diggs. And the question is, well, who the hell is Josh Allen going to throw the ball to? You do have Dalton Kincaid, the second year tight end. I do like him. I like Khalil Shakir in his third year now. I mentioned Curtis Samuel. Can Keon Coleman, who was their first pick in the second round, can he step up and be a wide receiver one right away? I'm personally not counting on that, but there's always a chance it could happen. Matt Milano, their linebacker, got hurt again. I feel bad because he got hurt last year pretty early in that overseas game. Got hurt again pretty badly in the preseason, or not during the preseason, but during training camp this year. And we'll see how long he's out for, but it sounds pretty bad. So Matt Milano hopefully is back sooner than later, but it might be a long-term thing. The defensive line does look great on paper, especially if Von Miller comes back and looks like Von Miller, which the training camp reports have said he does look like the old Von Miller, so I hope he does. And I feel like if the Bills are going to be a good team this year, they have to play like a balanced football team. I feel like in the past three, four, five, years it's basically been like Josh Allen playing hero ball which at some points it works and it's fantastic but I think for this team to really be a great team just get back to the basics run the ball let's give James Cook and rookie Ray Davis some carries and see what they can do play defense and just make the simple plays can Josh Allen make the simple plays I mean just things like that it's really establishing the run for this team they have enough talent to still make the playoffs here it's not like I have them at six and eleven like they could still make the playoffs here their win total is ten and a half for a reason I'm sure so we'll see if they are more of a balanced team this year and can make a playoff push but for me personally I have my doubts and I have them at eight and nine the New England Patriots it may be a rough season for them of course they brought in Jacoby Brissett they brought in Antonio Gibson KJ Osborne they've had some early injuries in camp that have not been great Christian Barmore is going to be out for a bit Cole Strange who was their starting guard he might be out for a bit they traded Matthew Judon which I think was the right move for a team like them they're not expected to compete so you might as well trade judon for something they got like a third or a fourth round pick so i'll take that drake may did show flashes in the preseason but it is going to be jacoby Brissett as the week one starter i don't know if i hate that or love it i really don't know because you have people with very strong opinions on both sides I don't know how to feel about it. I mean, their early season schedule is tough, so maybe I do agree with this and just kind of throw Jacoby Brissett out there and they'll probably lose the first three, four games. And then you put Drake May in there and it's like, hey, it can't get much worse. So some low pressure there for Drake May. They have Gerard Mayo at head coach now. Of course, Belichick is gone. He's going to be on the Manning cast every week now, I saw. So we'll still get a bit of uh, Bill Belichick in our lives. Christian Gonzalez is back from injury. Their cornerback won. He was great last year. Got hurt pretty early. So that was unfortunate, but hopefully he can stay healthy and play well. The defense for this team has to play out of their minds to have a good record, and I just don't see that being the case. I don't think they have the defensive talent that they once did. I don't trust this offense to put up a lot of points. There are some interesting offensive players. They get Stevenson back from the injury last year at running back. They drafted Jalen Polk. Still, I just don't love this offense. Maybe Drake May will be great right off the bat. I did like him a lot. I preferred May over Jaden Daniels, as I said last video but the supporting cast is not good at all, so I'm expecting some growing pains, and I think it may be a rough season, so I have them at 2-15. and 15. The AFC North is up next, so first I have the Cincinnati Bengals at 11-6, and 6. their over-under is 10.5. Second, I have the Baltimore Ravens at 9-8, and 8. they also have a 10.5 win total. The Steelers in third for me at 9-8, and 8. they have an 8.5 over-under, and the Browns at 7-10, and 10. they have an 8.5 over-under as well. We'll start with Cincinnati. The Vi are not great right now because of the Jamar Chase situation. He may not even play in week one at this point, which is like a damn shame. I just don't know how they dragged it out this long. The Bengals are a notoriously cheap organization, but to let a guy like Chase, who's probably a top three wide receiver in the league, to let it drag out to this point is insane. Just get it done. I I, I just don't get it. Anyway, there is some big bounce back potential with this team, and I'm buying in myself, obviously. They were 10-7, and made the Super Bowl, went 12-4 and that year after that, so they were still an elite team that year. Lost in the divisional round, I believe, that year. Then last year, they went 9-8, and and they were missing Joe Burrow for over half the year, so that was a fantastic record with Jake Browning at quarterback most of the season. You have Burrow coming off the wrist surgery. That it's always concerning, but it seems like he's fine, so hopefully he is. They did lose Shadobe Awuzie 
Uh, he went to Tennessee at the corner. He, of course, was very good for them the past three years. Trent Brown at right tackle is a new addition. Orlando Brown at left tackle, but Jonah Williams is now gone. But still, the offensive line got better. So they seem better in the trenches as compared to the past. That should really help out this team. You do have T. Higgins in a contract year. Chase obviously wants a contract as well. So you have both receivers looking for new contracts. It's a big year for burrow chase and for t higgins but overall this is a well-coached team it's a good roster and all they need is a healthy joe burrow and for jamar chase to show up to work which i do think he is showing up technically but not playing so it's one of those hold in not hold out type situations but as i said just a shame it's taken this long and hopefully it's resolved soon because if chase was not playing which i think he'll come back at some point but if he was out for like the whole season this team might drop to nine or ten wins which is still fine but you would love to have jamar chase rather than not the ravens i have at nine and eight of course adding derrick henry was their big off-season acquisition they lost patrick queen lost gus edwards and lost geno stone so some pretty important pieces there they did not really get much better i do love the derrick henry signing but i just don't see how they got much better and then Patrick Queen and Geno Stone to make it worse they joined division rivals so that sucks I think the Derrick Henry thing will work out well I love the combination of him and his tough running versus you know and you have Lamar Jackson and he is just quick and elusive I think it's a great combination so I like those two together in the backfield their offensive line is not what it used to be John Simpson's gone now and they do have some good backups like Josh Jones I like and Ben Cleveland but their starters are not that great in Baltimore more on the offensive line so that is a piece of this team that can really hold them back it helps that Lamar Jackson's their quarterback if they had a pocket passer quarterback I probably would be much more concerned but it seems like no matter what Lamar would make that work their defense on paper is still very good and the one concern I have is can they replicate the same defense with Mike McDonald now gone he's the Seattle head coach Zach Orr is now their defensive coordinator he was their linebackers coach the past couple years so I'm hoping for Baltimore they can just keep the defense the same as it was because it was very good especially last year but sometimes when a coordinator leaves there is some natural regression so we'll see if that happens or not the weapons are not too bad Isaiah likely backing up Mark Andrews who's back and healthy I mean Andrews did get in that car accident but I do believe he's going to be fine and going to be playing, obviously, in week one. Rashad Bateman still here. Devontae Walker, a draft pick I liked. Uh, Zay Flowers, of course. And hopefully for Bateman, this is the year. I, I don't even know if it's year three or year four, but he's had problems staying healthy and being consistent so maybe this is the year it finally happens would not get my hopes up maybe Keaton Mitchell the running back comes back at the end of the year that would help them out a bit they're a pretty good team I think last year was really their shot to win the Super Bowl it sucks how it went they had a horrible game plan versus KC it is what it is I'd be surprised if they get back to the championship game of course I hope I'm wrong for their sake but I don't see it so I'll have the Ravens at nine and eight I have the Steelers in third at nine and eight and I'll admit when they got Russell Wilson and they got Justin Fields I was really on board right away when I heard those moves were made now that I'm sitting here thinking about it I'm not really that in on this team I do have them in nine and eight because they always find a way to get there I just thought with the quarterback upgrades I would like them a lot more but I don't Russell Wilson's had some bad vibes in training camp he had that calf issue Justin Fields looked pretty bad at most times in the preseason and whatnot I was hoping that the quarterback room would be a big upgrade but it might only be a bit of an upgrade, which is still an upgrade, but, you know, it's it's like I was hoping for more. Arthur Smith is their offensive play caller. That may be a good or bad thing. I don't know. It's going to be a run-heavy offense, and Najee Harris is probably a good build for that. Jalen Warren's coming off a hamstring injury. We'll see if he stays healthy or not. I mentioned they got Patrick Queen at linebacker. That should help. Their pass rush is great. Alex Highsmith, TJ Watt, Keanu Benson, Cam Hayward. Like, they are looking very good on the defensive line still and that is a place where they can win games their wide receiver spot aside from George Pickens is not good they have Van Jefferson Calvin Austin Roman Wilson was there I think second round pick so there's a lot of potential there out of Michigan but he did hurt his ankle I think he's trending towards playing week one so hopefully he's back their offensive line's young they have Zach Frazier a rookie center you have Broderick Jones at right tackle who was last year's first round pick they just feel like a typical 500 Mike Tomlin team and I think they'll go over 500 I'll have them at nine and eight maybe Russell Wilson or Justin Fields surprises us because I don't know like maybe they'll do something like that 
but I'm just not banking on it. So I think they're a fine team, but I don't see them going very far. And I think I have them missing the playoffs too. The Cleveland Browns at seven and 10 for me. I do have them a win and a half below their win total. I just have bad vibes about Deshaun Watson the whole general shoulder soreness thing. I just, something about it. I just don't think he's healthy. And I am concerned if he'll ever be a good quarterback again. They did bring in Jameis Winston to back him up. I do love myself some, some Jameis Winston, but he'll obviously make his mistakes, but he is fun to watch. They did bring in Jerry Judy. Maybe that works. He's still young, prime of his career trying to have a bounce back. Jordan Hicks was added at linebacker. I like him, but it's really the quarterback situation and mainly Watson that has me concerned. Now, Kevin Stefanski and his offense is usually very good. Of course, last year they went on this run with Joe Flacco, who's now backing up in Indianapolis. So at least there's a bit of a floor with Stefanski, but I just don't think they're going to get very high end quarterback play, which is not what you want. They could get Nick Chubb back around week five or so. That'd be a nice addition, especially if he looks like the old Nick Chubb. That's a lot to expect now at 28-29, coming off a second massive knee injury. So hopefully he looks good, but I just... I'm not expecting that. They have great edge defenders still. Miles Garrett, prime of his career. So Darius Smith still playing at a high level. The offensive line looks great on paper still, so that's going to help them out a lot. The Browns do have a high ceiling if Deshaun Watson bounces back, which I guess is always a possibility. But I feel like most people, and myself included, have kind of moved on from that. I thought last year could have been the year. It wasn't. He had his moments where he looked all right, but I think for the most part, Deshaun Watson is not going to be the guy we've seen back in Houston. And that's just a, it's a sad reality. If it happens and he bounces back, that's great. I've kind of reached a point where I feel bad for him, which maybe I shouldn't, but I kind of do. So we'll see if he bounces back. And if not, it's Jameis Winston's team. So we'll see how that goes. But I think they're a seven and 10 type of team. AFC South, I'm going to have the Texans in first place. No surprise. Nine and a half their win total. I have them at 11 and six. The Colts in second at nine and eight. Their over under is eight and a half. The Jaguars in third at eight and nine. They have an eight and a half over under win total and then last i have the titans at seven and ten their over unders six and a half so for houston it's a very exciting year probably their most exciting season in a long time maybe since like 2020 or something they made some nice additions in free agency daniel hunter aziz al shair and they added joe mixon and of course, they added Stephon Diggs via trade. The offense will be the big storyline, of course. CJ Stroud in year two. How does he back up that very impressive rookie year where Tank Dell was lost for the second half and the offensive line was always out with injuries? How does he bounce back? Not bounce back, but how does he look in his second year now with his offensive line hopefully more healthy this time around and a really good wide receiver added in Stefan Diggs with a great track record. Bobby Slowick, the offensive coordinator is still here. They added Daniel Hunter as I mentioned. They did lose Jonathan Grenard but I think for right now Daniel Hunter's the better player so that's probably going to work out in their favor. Danico Autry was suspended for six games so that sucks but D'Amico Ryans always has a great run defense going back to his days in San Francisco so I'm not that concerned about it but it is uh you know it's gonna suck losing him for six games Kamari Lassiter in round two was their cornerback pick out of Georgia he looked good in camp and in preseason and he should be a good cornerback too opposite of Stingley if that you know if, if Lassiter does work out that duo at cornerback can be there for a long time I know the expectations are high for this team but I did a video on them about a month ago I am pretty much all in on this team I think they can go very far this year they are not the 2019 Cleveland Cleveland Browns. I tried to debunk that in that video, so I don't think they'll be that bad. I think they're an 11 win team, so I have them at 11 and 6. Second place, the Indianapolis Colts at 9 and 8. I do like this team. I'm a Shane Steichen believer. I'm an Anthony Richardson believer who's now back and healthy. They get Jonathan Taylor for a full season. So I'm not expecting them to win the Super Bowl or anything like that, although it's, I guess it's possible. But I just don't expect that, but I do think they'll be close to or maybe a playoff team. Stay tuned for that. And it's not just the run game with Richardson and JT. It's also the defensive line, which is very underrated. Tyquan Lewis, Grover Stewart, DeForest Buckner, Quiddy Pay. Four really good players, some better than others, of course, but still a very good defensive line. And they can get to the quarterback, of course. The offensive line is still really good. Bernard Ryman at left tackle looked like a real player last year, their former third round pick in 2022 they have weapons that are good enough i think Pittman's great you have alec pierce who can make plays downfield same thing for adani mitchell the rookie for some reason 
Anthony Richardson loved throwing to Kylan Granson, the tight end, so maybe that's a connection that develops this year with Richardson hopefully playing more. But overall, it's just I buy into the coaching, I buy into Richardson, I think this roster is pretty good, so I would not be surprised if the Colts are over 500. They pretty much were a play away from making the playoffs last year with Gardner Minshew, so. And they missed Jonathan Taylor for half the year with the holdout and the other injury he had, so if they're more healthy this year and Richardson breaks out, which I think he might, then this team might be very good. Third, the Jacksonville Jaguars at 8-9. and nine. This is a team I am prepared to be wrong about. I think they're better than a below 500 team, but I kind of have to see it to believe it. There's still part of me that's like, because I know Lawrence is a very good quarterback, but there's still part of me that's like, I have to see it to believe it. Like, we did see it in 2022 for the most part, but last year left a bad taste in my mouth. And I know a lot of it was like bad luck and guys barely not finding the end zone, which was kind Calvin Ridley and Zay Jones, most times they would have like one foot out of bounds and they missed out on a lot of touchdowns by a little bit. So there, there was bad luck there. This roster on paper looks pretty good. You have Trevor Lawrence. They did add Brian Thomas Jr., one of my favorite players in this draft. Gabe Davis was added as well. They lost Calvin Ridley to Tennessee, but I like Brian Thomas Jr. a lot. And I think by the end of their careers, I think he may have a better career than Calvin Ridley did. So they get him, they get younger, they save money. If Devon Hamilton bounces back from last year and Trayvon Walker finally lives up to the number one pick potential, which I still don't know why they passed on Hutchinson, but different story for a different day. But if though if those two guys on the defensive line can come back and play well, then this defensive line could be great. You still have Josh Allen. They added Eric Armstead in free agency. So like they have a defensive line with great players on it. They just have to come through. Other free agent signings I liked. Of course, I mentioned Armstead, Mitch Morse, Ronald Darby. Having a center like Morse who's been around for a long time still playing at a high level it's definitely going to help out this team and the linebacking room is still solid you have a Khan who's always up there in the tackles leaders you have Devin Lloyd who was really good last year so once again this team if Lawrence can just bounce back from last year and live up to the player he was and is closer to 2022 and I think for them to be a very good team he has to be better than he was in 2022 but it's still possible that happens so I could be underestimating this team a bit even though I'm giving them a lot of praise but I'll have them at eight and nine last place at seven and ten the Tennessee Titans I may have them in last place but this is a team I can really see breaking out and I'm not gonna predict it because I don't have the uh the the balls to do it but but I could see a world where this team with a new head coach and Brian Callahan who's gonna run a different type of offense a more spread offense that's gonna be friendly for their receivers and friendly for the running backs and hopefully friendly for Will Levis who enters year two. Will Levis has all the physical traits and abilities to break out. It just depends if he can do it or not and be more accurate as a passer. And they added so many different skill position players from Calvin Ridley to Tony Pollard who looks much better in preseason after coming back last year and looking like he was hurt. And they brought in Tyler Boyd from Cincinnati as well who of course has familiarity with Brian Callahan. The cornerback room had massive upgrades. Shadobe Awuzie and Legereus Sneed that's an awesome cornerback tandem there. They brought in Ernest Jones, the linebacker from the Rams. He's 24, prime of his career, really good player. The offensive line has to bounce back. It was awful last year. They drafted J.C. Latham at seventh overall. They have Skaronsky next to him. Like They have some pieces on the offensive line that make you think it could look pretty good, but they have to do it first. And does DeAndre Hopkins have anything left? You know, I I have no idea. He's coming back from an injury with his knee. He should be okay for week one, maybe week two if if not, but he should be back soon at some point. Once again, I could just see a scenario where Will Levis really just breaks out and looks great this year. And with Callahan's offense, it might look completely different. The defense is not that bad. They have enough talent around this team. Like I like this division a lot. I do. I like the Texans this year. I like the Colts. I want to like the Jaguars. I like the breakout potential in Tennessee see like I do see the talent in this division unfortunately I can't have everybody winning 10 games so while the Titans win total is six and a half I could see them exceeding that I have them at seven and ten but if they went on to win eight or nine games this year it would not be too surprising the AFC West brings us to the Chiefs who I have at 13 and four their over under is 11 and a half in second I have the Chargers at 10 and seven their over under is eight and a half third I have the Broncos at six and eleven they're at five and a half and I have the Raiders at at 5 and 12. They're over under 6 and a half. With Kansas City, I'm expecting this offense to bounce back. And it wasn't like it was awful last year. They had some awful stretches. But I think this offense gets back to what it used to be. 
Patrick Mahomes, 4,800 yards, 40-plus passing touchdowns. They draft Xavier Worthy. They get Hollywood Brown, who I know is hurt right now, but he'll be fine by week three, four, whenever. So they have better weapons now, and Rasheed Rice is probably not getting suspended this year, maybe very late in the year. It's probably going to be next year. So hopefully a full season for him. The only concern I really have is the left tackle spot where they have Kingsley Sumaitai. I'm pretty sure it's how you say it. Their second round pick from this year's draft, who's supposed to be their left tackle. And they have to save money somewhere so I guess left tackle is one place where they can do it. It's not ideal, but if he can come in there and play well, which it seems like based on the training camp reports, he's playing well, so hopefully he is fine at left tackle. It's a lot of responsibility for a young guy, but if he can come in and do it, then their offensive line has a chance to be great. I like Pacheco. They just added P. Ryan to be a third down back, possibly. Their pass rush, it could be better. Chris Jones, of course, is great, but it, they need like George Karloff just to really step up and be great. He's had his moments, but he has to be like a, I don't want to say a 10 plus sack guy. It's not all about sacks, but just a guy who is a consistent really good pass rusher is what I'm trying to get at. So of course they're looking to three-peat and be the first three-peat champions in NFL history. I don't know if they'll do it. We'll get to that later, of course. This team, I think either way is going to have a great year record-wise. We'll see what happens in the playoffs, but I have them at 13 wins. For the Los Angeles Chargers, they bring in Jim Harbaugh who always comes in with a bang and has a great first year. He went 13-3 and his first year in San Francisco, went 10-3 and at Michigan back in 2015. They did bring in Denzel Perryman back on defense, who used to play for them in San Diego and back in Los Angeles, but he's back now. A bit older, of course, but a nice veteran to have at linebacker. Justin Herbert does have the plantar fasciitis injury, which is painful, but... He's now like a month removed, I believe, and I'm just hoping that as the year goes on, he gets more healthy. He's been back at practice, so he should be good to go. The weapons are not great. Lad McConkey was drafted in round two. Joshua Palmer, who is a fine NFL receiver, not who you want at wide receiver one, but he's probably going to be asked to be a wide receiver one. DJ Chark is there. Quinton Johnston, who I just do not like, he's there as well. The offensive line got better. The tackles look great. Rashawn Slater's at left tackle, still playing well. He came back from the injury and looked good last year. Joe Alt was taken in the draft at fifth overall out of Notre Dame. Has to go to right tackle, but he should be good there as well. The running game has J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards, a couple backs coming over from Baltimore. And they still have star players on defense. Khalil Mack, although Khalil Mack is now 33 and a half years old, he still plays at a very high level. They have Derwin James, who probably had his worst year last year, but he's still a good player. I'm not losing hope. Asante Samuel Jr., Joey Bosa, of course. Can he stay healthy? healthy, hopefully. I just think they have enough on paper to make this work. Hayden Hurst at tight end is pretty underrated too. So they have enough pieces, in my opinion, to make this work. If Christian Fulton can bounce back and be the cornerback he was drafted to be, he's still 25 years old, so maybe he will be that guy opposite of Asante Samuel Jr. I just buy into the whole Jim Harbaugh thing. I think they'll be a very balanced team this year. Justin Herbert may not put up his best numbers, but he might put up his most efficient numbers, which is very important. So I have them at 10 and seven. The Broncos I have at six and 11. So the Bo Nix and Sean Payton era officially begins. They did lose Russell Wilson and Justin Simmons. I mean, those are probably big losses for the most part. Maybe not Russ. I feel like Russ was not too well liked in Denver, especially based on what Sean Payton said last year when he had that quote about stop kissing babies and play football or something, whatever the hell he said. Uh, so maybe that does help them in a way. But Bo Nix looked good in preseason. I do like Sean Payton's offense. It's always seemed to work out. They had some good moments last year. They went on that winning streak during the middle of the season. They did fall a bit short of the playoffs, but they had their impressive moments last year. Year. Cortland Sutton still wide receiver one. He's close to 30 now. Jerry Judy's gone. So the receivers could be better. Can Marvin Mims step up? Maybe if he gets the playing time. I don't love their defense. And I feel like if Patrick Sertang were to miss time, like their other corners behind him are not great. So if he missed time, like they are screwed in the secondary. So I have my concerns about that. But I think the main thing for this team and their fan base is to look at Bo Nix and is he good or is he not? I mean, I, I think in this particular scheme and system, he can look good. I think Sean Payton and Bo Nix was like a perfect marriage. So I think it should work out for the most part, but it depends how good he does look and it can really get them on track for 2025 and 2026. This year and their record doesn't really matter as much. Just get Bo Nix in the right situations to succeed. And if he does, then maybe this organization for the next couple of years can have some hope and maybe they'll compete for the playoffs, but I just don't think it'll be this year. The Las Vegas Raiders, I have in last at 5-12. and 12. They bring in Antonio Pierce as their 
their full-time head coach was the interim last year. Gardner Minshew wins the quarterback job over Aiden O'Connell. Don't love that. I mean, I don't love either guy, but I'm like, you know what? You might as well give O'Connell the shot. He's the younger guy with some upside, but they don't do that. They made a big free agent splash with Christian Wilkins, which was kind of surprising, but they gave him a ton of money, so I get why he did it. Their front four could be very good. Christian Wilkins, Max Crosby, Malcolm Kuntz, they can actually have a very good pass rush. It would not surprise me. So they have a chance to wreck games in that way. Their safety duo of Merrick and Epps is not that bad either. But their offense probably won't be that great, which is why I'm hesitant to give this team a good record. Devontae Adams seems like he's one foot out the door. They drafted Brock Bowers, who could be a great receiving tight end. Jacoby Myers, Michael Mayer, the other tight end still there as well. So maybe they're sneaky good offensively, but I just, I'm not banking on that. I don't expect that to happen, but I guess it's a possibility. I just think it'll be another down year for these guys, unfortunately. So I have them at five and 12. For the playoffs, I have the Chiefs with a bye in the first round. I have the Bengals in the second seed. They would match up with the Colts, who are the seventh seed in my scenario here. And of course, I would have the Bengals winning that matchup. I could see the Colts making it close, especially if the Bengals' run D is struggling at that point in the year, because as I said before, I think the Colts will have a very strong rushing attack this year. But in all likelihood, if they're healthy, the Bengals should win that matchup. Three versus six, I have the Texans hosting the Baltimore Ravens. That'd be a really fun game. I would still think that the Texans win that matchup it might be close than you know closer than we think but i would think the texans win that but in that matchup i would have the jets winning another one that may be close but that would bring the jets on the road at kc in the next round of course i would have the chiefs winning that matchup it'd be really cool if the jets went in the arrowhead and won that game but i just don't see it happening the Bengals would host the texans i would have the texans winning that game i know it's outdoors but i just really like this texans team i think their defense may be better than cincinnati and offensively they match up as well so Joe Mixon gets his revenge and they win that game in my opinion then it would be the Chiefs hosting the Texans the Chiefs looking to three-peat once again I would have the Texans putting a stop to that I would have them winning this matchup which means I would have a Texans versus Eagles Super Bowl. And in that matchup, I think I like Philly. I could see it going either way, of course, but I think I would have Philly like 31-27 or something like that. So that's my prediction. Eagles, Texans, Super Bowl 2020 five by that point. Let me know how you guys feel. Leave your Super Bowl matchup in the comments. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching and I'll talk to you guys next time.